Okay, so taking it from the point from a standalone standalone amplifier into a larger system is, is quite a simple process. Uh, now that we know uh, that the inputs can be used and the outputs are, are configurable. So here we go, we'll actually um, make this into a full eight channel system with system routing. And uh, first of all, we will add the next amplifier to the system. Uh, as you can see, both these is a 125, this one is a 220. Both backs are identical, except for the, uh, the label that tells you which ones they are. So, very, very easy, very, very simple to use. I will plug in some power into that product here. And I'll also put the matrix mixer on the top of the unit as well. Okay. Now normally when you're plugging these systems together, you would actually have to uh, take Phoenix or Eurostyle connectors out from the back of the, uh, the DSP unit here and plug them into the, uh, the inputs here, 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 and here. Um, on the planner matrix system, one of the major features for installation is a thing we like to call amp link. So as the name suggests, it links the amplifiers to the DSP processor quickly and easily. So eight channels, so each one of these units here would need to be uh, wire stripped, uh, twisted, probably tinned and screwed into a connector uh, three times for a balanced audio. Or you can also have a uh, quite a simple method of going click to click and here to the bottom amplifier. And that's all eight channels of audio configured from your output side, from your DSP processor directly to your amplifiers, eight channels done. So there's actually no need to actually use these inputs, even though we've given you many standalone uh, type of uh, features here. But you could also take these outputs and also plug them in if you wanted, if you didn't want to use Amplink for any particular reason over perhaps longer distances or or something like that. This also, these outputs also give you the option to plug in uh, different types of amplifiers. So perhaps um, bridged. These are around about 440 odd. Uh, watts of output, but if you needed something like a thousand watts or or larger, you could just take it out directly from here into a different amplifier. One of our uh, excellent Bosch amplifiers, or our uh, or our EV cousins or Dynacord cousins amplifiers, um, are also very very good for that. So that's your your outputs. Again, on your inputs on here, we are using the combo connectors here. So the TRS. Um, or three pin XLR cables connect, and also your RCA or Kitsch connectors that uh, can be simply plugged in to the rear of the unit. So we will plug in something here, here, and you've got some input source. Up here, you could plug a microphone input in, not a problem. So that part um, of the system. To connect the network, you just simply uh, connect the other cables here into the network ports on the unit um, there and on the other amplifier as well. And those are the rack units um, actually configured and wired and done. So it actually looks quite uh, quite simple and easy there's not much to it uh, in terms of that relationship okay so connection for the uh, for the call stations in the wall panels is quite simple uh, on the rear of the unit there's RJ45 connectors two of them uh, that's for the loop through or daisy chaining of call stations uh, as you'll see over here it says control panels and the bottom one says call stations so we connect the call station 
to connect. Then we can simply just connect into a call station. Once we power the system on, we can see that the unit does a little dance for its RJ45 to see it searches what uh, units are out there and then we can see that it powers over Cat5, no problem. Again, capacitive touch, very, very nice. So that is the call station. So the wall, the wall panels are connected um, on the rear of the unit. Now both the call station and the wall panels, user IDs, are set at the bottom of the unit here. Um, so you can set the user ID with the dip switch prior to powering up. So we simply uh, set the dip switches uh, within this area here and then we can connect this part to the wall, slide in, pull down, click it on and the RJ45 connectors are down below here. You can run them in from up the top or in from behind the wall and again capacitive touch. So when we connect into this, into this unit from the rear, we can connect to the control panel and we see that the unit is, uh, is powered up and you can daisy chain onwards from that point. Select to toggle, all of the good stuff. So now you've connected uh, inputs into the system, you've connected outputs eight channels of outputs for an eight zone system together, um, full control network here um, and we're pretty much completely done. For an eight zone system that's a, a very very quick easy setup time. The only thing I will add from here is that uh, the rear of the unit for the uh, for the sensor um, for the, the uh, auto standby mode is down the bottom here on the amplifiers um, they are, there is a 12 volt powering for movement sensors um, and also the contact closure here uh, that can be uh, accessed. The override input is below that, so we could actually put an evac or emergency override um, signal to the amplifier or to, uh, to pause the amplifier while the evac system is taking over. Again, this is not an, an evac product, it's not EN54 certified. Um, but the feature is still there for, for some countries and regions that require that feature. And that's pretty much the hardware installation of the Planner Matrix, short and sweet. Bosch, invented for life.